Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the joy of trucking, where we share our experience with you, hoping to uh, help you have some insights into the trucking industry, and also where you can just come along for fun as an armchair traveler on the roads of America. But today, here we are with Kevin uh, at this fine, fine teaching tool, <laughs> and he's just uh, gonna tell us a little bit about this. So unlike your car, which uses hydraulic brakes, the trucks use air brakes. When you step on the brake pedal in your car, it pumps brake fluid through the lines and makes the brakes apply at your wheels. That stops your car. But in trucks, because it's so long and covers more distance, they use compressed air, which is faster. So this is a representation of all the components of an air brake system like you'd find on one of these big trucks. So this is like, this is the hub where the tire is mounted, and this is the actual brake drum. Inside it, there are the brake linings. So when you step on the brake, the brake lining presses against the brake drum, causing friction, stopping the wheels. The brake linings mounted here with these, with these springs. The springs hold them away from the brake drums so that your brakes aren't always applied while the wheel is turning. Uh, and this is an, uh, an arm and there's a cam inside here. So when you rotate this arm, the cam pushes out against the brake linings and pushes them against the wheel. What makes the arm turn? This arm right here is attached to this, this, this shaft, right? So when you rotate this arm, it rotates the shaft and applies the brakes. What makes this arm move? Good question. This is a linkage here to this assembly. This is your air brakes, right? This is your air chamber. Now this has two chambers, <clears throat> and this is called a spring brake. You'll find these on the drive axles and the trailer axles. On the steering axle, or the front wheels of the tractor, you only have one chamber. These are effectively parking brakes. So when there is no air present, no air pressure, mm -hmm. the spring in here applies the brakes, locks the wheels up. So you have to have air pressure in this chamber to disengage or compress that spring to open up the brakes and let the wheels turn. So you have an air compressor in the tractor that builds up the air pressure in the system and supplies the air for the brakes and other things. But the brakes will not work unless you have that sufficient air pressure built up. So in this chamber, you have a spring and you have a bladder that has to be inflated to get the spring to remove pressure and take the brakes off. In this chamber, this is the actual service brake. In other words, when you step on the brake pedal, you're sending air through the blue lines to this chamber and there's a bladder in there that makes the brakes come on, moves the arm in this direction. That bladder from, that gets supplied from the red line inflates this bladder and makes the brakes go off. So when there's no air in this red line, the spring makes the parking brake come on. So that's basically how it all works. You've got air, you've got constant air pressure from the emergency or red line to the trailer that takes your parking brakes off. When you, when you, disengage the parking brake. You've got your service brake, the foot pedal puts air through the blue line that applies the brakes to stop or slow you down. Mm -hmm. So those are all the components. You'll notice there's a lever here too. On the older trucks, they, they don't do it anymore, but there was actually a lever on the dashboard of the truck where you could apply the brakes only to the trailer wheels, not the tractor wheels, because if you apply the brakes to the tractor more than the trailer the trailer is still trying to go fast and can actually swing out or overtake the tractor that's when you get a jack oh, wow so in some cases the drivers would want to like put some pressure on the brakes of the trailer first to avoid jackknifing uh -huh. the way it's set up now the pressure to all the brakes on all the wheels is equal so all the wheels should slow down at the same rate and you won't get that jackknife effect Comes in handy though when you're when you've got a student driver and the instructor sitting in the passenger seat and sees that the student is about to go through an intersection or cause a problem where the student should be applying the brakes, the instructor reaches over and applies the trailer brakes and stops the truck before something bad can happen. Good idea. So it's, a good, it's a good little thing to have, but 
They don't put it on the new trucks now because it's it's not supposed to be necessary. Okay. Yeah. Probably another, made the instructors feel a little safer though. Yeah, <laughs> and it's another way to control just the brakes on the right. trailer. Just, it's right, the and this separate. really, this explains why uh, we ran into a problem this morning and why we had to take the trailer in, right? Because yeah, because we, the, this we had a, been the problem. If you see uh, here, right here, there's a connection on the end of the axle where you'd, you'd mount your tire, and there's a, a connection here for an air line. So what happens is air comes through the axle out here and goes to a hose that inflates the tires. So on our trailers, you always have full tires. Automatically. Yeah. You don't have to worry about having a flat tire all the time. But I had a tire that was leaking. So what was happening was it was leaking so much that it was draining air from the whole system. So this red hose wasn't getting enough air. And what might have happened if the, if the leak got worse, the tire, if the pressure went low enough, the parking brake might have engaged. You have to have enough air in the system to keep your, your wheels from being locked in the parking position. And that can happen to you while you're moving if you suddenly lose all your air. When I was with my trainer, we hit a piece of debris on the highway. It flew up under the truck and cut one of our airlines. Oh, wow. And I pulled over immediately. If I had tried to drive another mile, all the air would have leaked out of the system and the wheels would have just locked up. We would have been, we would have been in a full braking situation from 60 miles an hour on an interstate. That would have been very bad. Very bad. We would have lost our air very fast. I was able to get it over to the side of the road within about 10 seconds, and then I watched the gauge go right down to nothing. There you watched the gauge do what? It, it dropped right down <laughs> to zero. And if that had happened while we were moving, it would have been very serious. Wow, yeah, that was very another, bad. Another thing they're demonstrating here, these are, this is what disc brakes look like. So you have, you have a disc here, it's a big circle of steel, instead of having this brake drum with the brake linings or brake shoes inside mm -hmm. you'll have this this is disc. a different system this is a different type Should of we make a different video you know, for this that? it's, it's part of this system you'll have a big disc right here instead of this drum yeah and instead of the brake shoes inside the drum you have two brake shoes that press against the sides of the disc so these would be the brake shoes on either side here and this would be the disc in the center so but everything else is the same your air is applying those brakes to the discs on my trainer's truck which is a 2021 all the wheels on the tractor had disc brakes the front wheels and the drive wheels but all our trailers still have the drum system mm -hmm. the truck that we're driving is a 2019 all our wheels have the drum system okay well okay. thank you for explaining the system to us all right that's the brakes that's here's, the brakes here's your parking brake this yellow knob is what you'll see on the on the dashboard of the truck. So Inside, when you pull yeah. that out, you're applying the parking brake to the tractor. There'll be a red one next to it on the dashboard and that will apply the parking brake to the trailer. Mm -hmm. When you push them in, the parking brakes are disengaged and the truck will roll freely. Yeah. Okay. And that's where we heard the hissing sound. We heard a hissing sound morning. from the red the red knob yeah. for the trailer. And what can happen if your if your air pressure drops below 40 psi these will pop out on their own and all the wheels will lock up and go into parking brake. All right, well, very important to understand this system. Thank you for explaining it to us. And uh, with that, if you learned something, then please do give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this and come along for a ride with us, hit that subscribe button. And with that, we wish you a great day from Kevin and Tanya. With love. Bye. Bye.